about half of the runner lining up for a 100 mile ultra marathon do not cross that finish line. And it's not just new runner. Experienced runner also face the dreaded DNF, did not finish. That's one of the biggest fear for ultra runner because despite all of the training, all of the hard work for many, many months, this can be the outcome of your race. We're pushing our limits. And when you push your limits, that means that sometime you will fall short. Sometimes things will not go well. And sometimes you will fail to meet these ambitious goals. So today I want to provide you my top tips to avoid the DNF. Hi, Simon here. Welcome to my channel. My goal on this channel is to inspire you and provide you tips to help you have great adventure out there. I'm an experienced ultra runner with 4,300 miler under my belt and no DNF. So today we're talking about that. We're talking about DNF and how to avoid them. And the first thing I really want to emphasize is that DNFs are part of ultra running. If you try anything ambitious in life, if you're really pushing your limits, you will fail to meet these goals sometimes and you shouldn't feel bad about it. That's part of running. And the important thing is how to deal with DNF. Yes, it's okay to acknowledge it. You fail. This is not what you wanted to do. You want to see that finish line. It's okay to feel bad, but then you need to look back, learn and grow from that so that next time you will go further and eventually you will succeed. And it's a fine balance between accepting failure, feeling bad, but at the same time, not hurting your mind game because ultra running is a lot about your mental toughness. And if you start doubting yourself, you will always struggle in these races because it's always a struggle at some point and you need the confidence that you can do it. And you shouldn't let the DNF cast self doubt on yourself. You're strong enough to do that. Maybe that didn't happen that day and you will find a reason why you will adjust, you will solve these problems and you will come back stronger. And I'm planning to do a video specifically about that, how to deal with DNF, how to deal with failure, both in running and in life and how to grow from that and how to come back stronger. But today that's not what we're doing. Today we're not learning how to deal with DNF. Today we're learning how to avoid DNF. And that's also an important disclaimer is that you cannot 100% prevent DNFs. Of course, I have a lot of different tips. It would be way too long to dive deep in any of those. So I'm going to bang, 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 shoot them pretty rapidly. But many of these, I'll try to point it out. Sometimes I have a full video, a 10, 15, 20 minute video to really help you dig deeper in that subject. For example, nutrition. I have a full video about fueling in the race so that you can be successful but I'm just going to mention it today. And I divide them in three categories. The first one is training and preparation. The second one is about race day, the decision that you make. And the last one is about your mental game, the last protection that you have against a DNF. Let's go. And I think it's important to not feel bad or ashamed of DNF. That's part of ultra running. But I think it's normal that you should feel pride in finishing races, especially the race where you struggled so much, especially the race that didn't go according to plan, that you really, really had to dig deep. And myself, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud that I have 4,300 mile attempt and 43 finishes. That's something that is very difficult to achieve, to have this consistency. Because let's be clear, if you follow my channel, you know it. It's not because I haven't pushed my limit that I'm able to finish all the time. I do push my limit. I always pick races that are extremely challenging and sometimes I stack them up so close to each other. For example, last spring I did Mount Fuji 100 mile, Kokodona 250 and Bryce Canyon back to back to back to back, one week apart. I've also done some of the hardest ultra marathon, Ure 100 mile, Bad Water and so on. So I am challenging myself then maybe it's because I'm just lucky, right? I just always have good days. And that is absolutely not the case. For example, I lost something like 10, 15 pounds from diarrhea in one race. I went shitting probably 20, 25 times over a period of 22 hours. 
I've raced twice with broken ribs. If you've ever had a broken rib, you know how painful that is. I've raced with a broken toe. What are you doing down there? I fell over. What you fell over for? I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. Good luck. Ah. I had storm, I have hail, I had the heat waves, I also had the race losing my drop bag and not having my night stuff. And the race I'm most proud of are these finishes. These finishes that quite frankly could have been and should have been DNF, but somehow I was able to keep grinding. I'm damn proud of that. I'm damn proud that I did not DNF. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning, you shouldn't feel ashamed. You shouldn't feel too bad about the DNF. Let's start with training and preparation, which is in my mind by far the most important. On race day, it's too late. The table is set and then things are unfolding. Yes, you can mess it up, but the six to 12 month period before the race is really the critical period. It's a longer period of time, so it doesn't feel as intense, but that's really where it's happening. Proper preparation, proper training will solve so many problems that you won't have to deal with on race day. And you'll have problems on race day, so try to solve as many as possible ahead of time. And the first thing that we need to talk about is how long do you need to prepare for an ultra marathon? Some people will read a book, get super excited, very pumped up, and now they want to run hundred mile in three months. If you're already a runner, maybe, but otherwise it's really important that you reserve enough time for your training cycle. It takes time for your body to adapt. It takes time for you to gain fitness. It takes time for you to get used to the different things that you need beyond just running so that you'll be successful in an ultra marathon. So make sure to have a six to 12 month period minimum. And these six to 12 months, you should organize them. You should plan, you should have a training plan as soon as possible and commit to it. And if you need help building a training plan, here's a video, but it's very important that you reserve more time than you would think. Because one of the most common thing that will happen is in training, you suffer an injury, you suffer some setback, or maybe you don't have the motivation and you fall behind in your training and plan for setbacks and unforeseen problem. And the reason you want a training plan is that you will have to balance two things. Under training, so yes, you have to go run out there, but also over training. And actually a lot, lot, lot of ultra runner are more type A personality and they risk over training. That's the most common issue is going on too many miles, getting injured, and now you're sidelined for three to six months. Because the most common reason to not finish a race is because you won't even make it to the start line because you're not healthy enough, you have injuries, and you know that you cannot do it. And if you need help, you can even hire a coach. For example, my close friend, Coach Brian, we have the podcast together, Buckle Up, which I suggest you have a look. He's a coach, he's taking athlete. If you need someone, especially for races at altitude like Leadville, I suggest you have a look at his website. But you can yourself also create a training plan that is smart and that is including, of course, running, but rest days, strength training, mobility training, and preparing for various problems that you will face during a race. Because that's also an important detail here is that know what's the race you're signing up for and what are the challenges. If you race a race like Leadville, altitude will be a problem. You got to prepare for that. If you race a race like Havelina 100 mile, heat will be a problem. You gotta, you gotta include heat training or heat adaptation session. Something else that you should try to do as early as possible is finding the right gear for you, finding good gear. If you're curious about the gear I'm using myself, I have some link in the description below as to what I'm using and what I think is really high quality. But even a high quality product might not be what is good for you. Shoes that fit for me might not fit for you and you gotta practice with that. It actually can take several months to find the right shoe that you can race with and not have blisters. Because it's so easy to use a running shoe, run five mile and not have blisters. But when you're pushing 30 mile, 50 mile, 100 mile, that's where the blisters happen. And importantly, 
train with your gear, practice with your gear. Of course, when you go on training run, it's a little different, but for example, poles, don't wait on race day to use them for the first time. Train with them, use them. Also get used to your running vest. Where are you gonna put your poles when you don't need them during the race? Do that in training so that on race day, it's seamless. On race day, you don't need to think about these things. You can focus on your race, not lose any time, and any problems with gear you will have during your training, not on race day. Race day is not the time. And the last piece is know the race that you're gonna do. Study it as much as possible. Go on YouTube, watch video about this course so that you know the different segment. You know the aid station, you know the distance, you know the challenges. And that snippet of information, that little tip that you can hear in a video sometimes, maybe the full video is not helpful, but there's one or two things that you're learning that's gonna help you finish. Because at some point we're all experienced runner and it's the detail, it's the little extra that you can do to prevent a DNF that will help you. Now race day is here, you're excited, you're nervous. There's different ways you can feel, you can have a look here, but hopefully you're prepared. Hopefully you listen to the first half of this video and you've crossed your T's, you've dotted your I's and now you're ready to rock and roll. Still, you can make mistakes today that will ruin everything. And I want to give you some tips to avoid these mistakes. The first one are pretty obvious, but put yourself a reminder because this is so important that you're not going to do it. And oh, geez. Oh, geez, Rick. Oh, geez, Dad. Oh, geez. Oh. You got to eat. You got to take calories. You're going to burn so much energy. You cannot do it if you don't eat properly. So, before the race, of course, you should have had plan your fueling strategy and practice and training. But on race day, don't forget to eat. Start early, eat plenty, eat often, and eat food that your stomach can tolerate. Similarly, you got to drink and you got to think about salt. Especially if you're at altitude or if it's a hot race, you get dehydrated very quickly and you got to fight that. You got to not forget to do these things. When it comes to pace or race strategy, Look, if your name is Killian, Jim, or Courtney, don't listen to my advice. Otherwise, start slow. Slower than you think. Run with other people that seem to be at your level of fitness, even potentially with people that seem to be a little slower than you. You can always accelerate towards the end if you have the energy. If you start too slow, uh, you can sprint at the end, that's fine. But if you start too fast, you're gonna be f my friend. You're gonna be f so hard and you're gonna have a terrible day don't do it start slow and pick up the pace if you feel so good but in all likelihood you won't feel that good and the reaction that people have to that sometimes is well there are cutoff i gotta be fast enough for cutoff and that's that's true but from my experience all of my best times and i have like i said a 16 hour 20 hour 21 22 hours i have good times and these good times were not necessarily from me starting fast. These good times were from being steady. And being consistent means having a steady pace, not starting out too fast, being reasonable about it. You gotta keep moving and you gotta not lose time. You gotta save time where you can save time. Aid station is an obvious one. It's great to see your crew. It's great to hang out. I play with dogs all the time because I know I have time, but you have to keep in mind the cutoff that you might or might not be facing. You have to be aware of these cutoff. If you have plenty of time, sure, do what you want. If you're tight with cutoff, you gotta be focused right here. Your aid station is an easy time where you can save so much time. And the things to do to shave off time, I don't have a video about it, but I'll do it someday. First, come in the aid station already knowing what you wanna do and have a routine. My routine is to start with taking everything that I need for my next segment. For example, I'll fill my bottle, take some food to travel, empty my trash. If it's nighttime, I'll take my headlamp, I'll take some clothing. And now I think about taking care of myself. Do I need to drink right now? I should probably drink right now. Do I need to eat something? It's good to always eat something. And if possible, try to avoid sitting down. If we sit down, that's easily a 5, 10, 15 minute that you're throwing down the drain. Sometimes you will need it, so sometimes do it. That's why we have chair, and you will see me in races. I do sit down, I do sleep sometimes, 
but be aware of the time that you're investing in that. And it can be a good investment to take care of your body like that. Another big one, a big transition that you need to make between racing a half marathon and marathon and now you're racing ultra marathon is that now this is not a short term thing. Now you cannot just deny problem and finish. You got to take care of problems when they're small. If you feel a heat spot, chafing or blisters, take care of it now. If you ignore it, it's just going to get worse and you're going to have to deal with the pain for a much longer period of time, a much more intense pain. And things can spiral out of control to the point where some people will DNF because of feet problem like blisters or chafing. And the last thing is use your crew smartly. Understand where they need to be to help you. Where will you need help? Where do you need a pacer? They are there to support you. That's their role today. Before diving any deeper, what do you think? Do you have any tips to provide others? Please let us know in the comments below. If you appreciate this video, please leave a thumbs up. And the last piece is about your mental game. And I think that's something that I'm very strong at. And I have a couple of videos on helping you become stronger mentally and be able to push your limit. Because in an ultra marathon, you will suffer. The mental game is basically your last line of defense. When you're bleeding out of your ass, when it's painful, when every step is agony, now it's in your head. Do you want to finish or not? And it would be great to do an ultra marathon where you don't even need to dig deep. You just, you just breeze through it. You're feeling good. But I can tell you right now, you're going to struggle. You're going to be in pain. Remember, we're challenging ourselves. We're pushing our limits. And when we're pushing our limits, it's very uncomfortable. It can be painful. And your brain will tell you, why the f am I doing that right now? Let's just, let's just, let's just sleep. You know, let's just sleep. You got to have a strong mental game. And that takes years and years of training to be able to have that, to be able to keep going no matter what. And just a few pointers. One is that you have to have a strong why. You have to know why you're doing that because you're going to ask yourself, why do I keep pushing through that? When you're at the at aid station, you're sitting down, you're feeling comfortable. Why would I go out right now? Maybe even have some slogan or, or motto that you keep telling yourself, you know, like dig deep or stay hard. It, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's motivating you to keep going. Personally, I'm just really stubborn. So if I said I was going to do something, I'm doing it. It's that simple. Being stubborn sometimes is helpful. And closely associated to the why is picking the right race for you. Yes, think about the challenges that you will face. Don't pick a race that is very hot if you struggle with the heat, but also pick a race you're excited about. Pick a race that the views will inspire you or there's a connection for you. A lot of people, for example, will read books and think about Bad Water or Leadville and that might drive you. And if that's the case, your why will be much stronger. And on race day, there's really two tactics for the mental game. One is you can lean into it kind of in the pain cave and being, for me, I feel more underwater and the pain, I kind of know it's there, but it's not as sharp. But the other option is distraction. Talk with people, enjoy the view, meet new people. The community is great. And when you're talking with someone, for example, in the middle of the night, you might have been in pain, but now that you're talking, having this interesting conversation, sometimes a new segment will just go like this because you had a great conversation. These are free miles, just seize that opportunity. And on race day, I think it's important to take races like that seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun out there, you know? The race to me is a celebration of all of the training, all of the hard work. Race day is the fun day. Again, it won't be fun all the time. Again, you're bleeding out of your ass, that's not so fun. But if you make it something positive, if you realize that this is what I've been training for all that time, that will make it a little bit easier to go a little further. And the last part again is use your crew, use your pacer, use that as a catalyst to keep going. For me, for example, usually Nora is the one crewing or pacing me. I'm not going to drop a race when Nora is pacing me. I mean, that would make her feel pretty bad. So, all right, I guess we'll keep going. And I kind of use that, use Nora as a way to trick me into going a little further. And all that being said, you got to fight against DNF. 
but not to the point of injury. You need to be able to draw the line between this is possible today or I'm actually injuring myself. Because we're running for fun, we're running for adventure, we're running for positive reason. But an injury could sideline you for three months, six months, one year. You have to be careful and you have to some extent to listen to your body. Are you hurting or are you hurt? And these are extremely different, but they can feel almost the same. And if you're hurt, take care of yourself. Come back another time. If you're hurting, you're bleeding out of your ass, no excuse, you see that finish line. And that's it. For a 300 miler, no DNF. These are my tips to avoid DNF. But big reminder, it's impossible to totally avoid the risk of a DNF. Every time I line up for myself for a race, even if it's a race I've done before, even if it's a race that is easy, I never know. I never know if I'm gonna finish. And the best way to prevent these DNF is through training and preparation. But race day, you can mess up everything by stupid, stupid, stupid mistake, trying out new gear, not taking care of yourself, ignoring a blisters, and now you're facing a huge problem. But at least you have your last line of defense. That's where you make your stand, that's where you say, no, I'm not dropping. I'm not dropping, I'm finishing. And that's your mental game. And you'll need training for that, to have a strong mental game that no matter what, you are committed to seeing that finish line. And don't feel bad if you DNF. It happens. The most important thing with DNF is to get back up. It's not about how many times you fall, it's about getting back up, getting stronger, and coming back at it. You didn't succeed this year, but you will next year if you learn from your experience, if you learn from your mistake. As the saying goes, the wise man learns from his mistakes, but the wisest man learns from someone else's mistakes. So hopefully these tips will help you see that finish line, avoid the DNF, and achieve all of your goals. But what do you think? What are tips that you would give to prevent DNF? Please let us know in the comments below. I'll make a video about how to deal with DNF, how to learn from failure so that you can come back stronger. But until then, please leave a thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends, and thanks for watching.